Clashes between M23 rebels and the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo have intensified in recent weeks and are gradually approaching the city of Goma. From their refugee site, internally displaced persons from several villages in the Nyaringongo territory are hearing the detonation of heavy weapons and are often alarmed by bullets fired by self-defense fighters. It is a situation that is putting its strain on the humanitarian organizations intervening on their behalf. Zanep Neti Zaide reports from Goma. Hardly a day goes by without bullets rigging out around the Kanyaruchinya camp for internally displaced persons or loud banks from heavy weapons being heard from the front lines in Kibumba. Jose Vumilia, recently displaced from Kibati, can take it no longer. She says that since she arrived in the camp, bullets have been flying every day. She says she fled the insecurity and is stunned to see that it continues to this day. International organizations are doing their best to help the displaced despite the worrying security situation around the camp. The country director of the international organization, Tia Found, Popi Angwendia, reveals that they are determined to assist the displaced despite the security situation. She says her organization is involved in water distribution, hygiene and sanitation, and food security. She says that despite the security and fear in the camps, they are determined to save people in emergencies. Safil Society in North Kivu province continues to call on the Congolese government all means necessary to route the M23 rebels and enable thousands of displaced families in the camp around Goma to return to their normal lives. Christian Calamo is a member of Savel Society. He says that the authorities are taking good care of the displaced who are not doing well even psychologically. He says that they need to be reassured of a calm environment in which to live before the end of the war. For some time now, sporadic clashes have been reported between groups of young reservists and militia in Niragongo territory, jeopardizing the peace of mind of displaced people in various camps around and in the city of Goma. For VOA Africa, I'm Zanim Netiz. Liberians are voting today in a runoff election to decide who runs their country for the next six years. Dennis Nipson has more from Monrovia. About 2.4 million registered voters across Liberia are expected to go to the polls today, Tuesday, November 14, to elect other President George Weah of the Coalition for Democratic Change, CDC, or former Vice President Joseph Wakai of the Opposition Unity Party, UP, the top two finishers in the country's October 10 first round vote. Nada won obtained the 50 plus one vote in the first round of the election held in October as required by the Constitution of Liberia. In his final press conference over the weekend, Boakai told the nation that defeating Wea would be the end of the problems the country is encountering. It is the end to lawlessness and industrialized corruption. It is the end to the cheers by mortars, relatives and friends who continue to weep for their children and loved ones who were the victims, disappearances, and mysterious murders. For many parents, it is the end to the drug epidemic. For his part, we have vowed during his final campaign rally over the weekend to restore the hope of Liberians if given a second chance. I want to show you with a new enthusiasm. I will dedicate my effort to the second day to accelerating the implementation of the existing program and policy. We will also take on new initiatives that will further justify the vote of confidence in place in us by these numerous endorsements. 
Voter Emmanuel Begon tells VOA he will cast his ballot to transform the country. Things are not too far with the citizens, so more people, these are some of the things we think you see today. We sit in our airplane checker and what have you, have not to be that way. But because of no job, these are things that make us sit in our home and sort of be like that. Another voter, Amanda Gay, is a food seller. She says she will vote for better schooling for her children. I'm going to vote my giving. We are tired of so We need better education for our children because for me, I'm already in my future. So I need better education for my children's future. I need to live a better life in my children. The chairperson of the National Elections Commission, Devieta Brand Lasana, told VOA the board is ready for today's vote across the 5,890 polling places. The commission is very well prepared for the 14th November presidential runoff. I say this to say that we have all the money that was budgeted for the process. Our entire budget was uh, 53 million. So we have received all of that money. We also say we are ready because our ballots arrived in the country last week and they were deployed to the field. According to the Constitution, the result is expected to be declared within 15 days. But unlike the first round, which requires a 50% plus one to win, the winning candidates in the runoff only need a simple majority to win. For VOA's Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nipsey in Morovia, Liberia. Nigeria's ruling party emerged victorious in two of the country's three states that were electing their governors on Saturday in polls marred by violence and accusations of electoral fraud. These elections are traditionally hotly contested in a country where governors have extensive powers and despite the deployment of large security forces, several people were shot dead, according to local media and an official of the Independent National Electoral Commission was abducted. The polls were held on Saturday in the central state of Kogi, the southern state of Bayelser, and the southeastern state of Imo. President Bola Ahmed Timunubu's party, the All Progressive Congress, APC, came out well ahead in Imo state, where incumbent Governor Hope E. Uzodimna was re-elected for a second term with 540,308 votes against 71,503 for his opponent, according to official tarries. The APC also retained Kogi State, where Ahmed Usma Odob Ododo won with over 446,000 votes. The Social Democratic Party, SDP, came second with 259 votes. However, in Bayelsa State, outgoing Governor Doye Dili, a member of the Opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, retained his post with 175,196 votes against 110,108 for the APC candidate, according to the results announced on Monday. In all, the APC governs 20 of the country's 36 states against 13 for the PDP, the governors of the last three states come from three other parties.